So you're uh, in for a treat. I don't know how many of you have heard Adam Swanson play before. Well, I can't see it, but so. <laughs> no, I can see a few, but uh, almost nobody. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, going back a little bit in his history, um, he was a world champion ragtime piano player. I think he has a different, longer way of saying that, but uh, anyway, and I remember that was a, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, go beyond that. So I think they wanted to have him back, so they changed the rules so that you could uh, win this honor four times. And so he went back, and guess what? He won it four times. <laughs> so, kind of neat. He said uh, recently, he, one of the highlights of his last year was a two-week tour of uh, Australia. He played in uh, 10 concerts in eight cities in a couple of weeks. And he has made his home temporarily in Durango, Colorado. Um, he plays there in the, um, I guess it's Strader Hotel. And I uh, hope I can get out there to hear him play out there as well. So uh, please welcome to the stage uh, four times world champion Adam Swanson.
Thank you so much. Ooh, loud microphone. <laughs> well, I am delighted once again to be back at the Glen Miller Festival for a second year in a row. And uh, I'd like to thank Marvin for having me. Hey. <laughs> I may be a little out of place as the uh, one ragtime pianist at the festival, but what many people don't realize is that ragtime is the basis of all of our great American popular music. It was the first truly original American musical form. And jazz, blues, swing, and even rock and roll, and everything that we know and love today grew out of it. It's sort of the basis of my style. And when I play concerts, I like to take people through a tour of the history of American music, play ragtime, and they get into uh, some of the big band music of the 1930s and 40s, which I'll do more in the second half. For now, here is uh, another early ragtime tune. Oh, the first one, by the way, Maple Leaf Frank. Did you all know that? I was about to tell you. Good. That's my arrangement of it. Hopefully, Scott Joplin would have liked it. I don't know. I can't ask him. And <laughs> here's another tune from the same year, actually, 1899. Uh, this is sort of a folk song. Nobody knows who really wrote it, but it was first published by the Layton Brothers in 1912, and it was introduced in vaudeville by Mae West. If you've never heard her sing that song, this song, you're really missing out. It was originally called Frankie and Albert, but we know it today as Frankie and Johnny. And, uh, it's, it's a true story. It's about a real murder that happened in St. Louis. And Frankie Baker shot her 17-year-old boyfriend, Albert Britt. And they wrote this song about it. And I play it as a medley with the St. James Infirmary Blues. Here we go. Down in the dungeon.
that too. I can remember that. <laughs> Frankie and Johnny. And now, a uh, ragtime tune that I would like to play, especially because we're here in the state of Iowa. Ragtime is written all over the country, but it was especially big here in the Midwest. And this is really fun rag, which was very popular at the time it came out, which was back in 1901. It was written by a pharmacist from Oskaloosa, Iowa. His name was Clarence C. Wiley, and he named the tune off the shelf behind him, the Carbolic Acid Rag. <laughs> And the, picture, the original sheet music cover has a picture of a skeleton on the front, and it says carbolic acid, a hot rag. So here it is. Hope you enjoy. <laughs>
Walt says, Scott Joplin wrote a number, and I'd like to play the one for you that is my favorite. This was written in 1898, believe it or not, uh, by, by a black composer from Detroit, Michigan, named Harry P. Guy. And it was sort of a moderate hit at the time, and, and I just love it. It's called Echoes from the Snowball Club, a right time waltz.
Uh, if you've attended one of my concerts before, you may have heard me mention a man who is probably my biggest influence as a piano player. His name was Johnny Maddox, and he was from Gallatin, Tennessee, which is near Nashville. And uh, we happened to have lost Johnny last year. He's 91 years old. But uh, we worked together for a long time. And he was one of the most legendary ragtime piano players there ever was. In fact, he's the only one I know of that ever earned a star on Hollywood Boulevard. It's right next to Will Rogers. And uh, that's because Johnny sold over 11 million records uh, on the Dot label in the 1950s. Well, the woman that taught him to play the piano uh, at first was his great aunt Zula, who had played ragtime with an all-girls orchestra at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. And so uh, there's quite a lineage there. And one of the tunes uh, that he used to play, I borrowed many of his arrangements, was Irving Berlin's famous Alexander's Ragtime Band. So I'm going to play that for you. But I'm going to do it the way Johnny used to do it, with a bunch of key changes that he learned from his great aunt and a whole bunch of other songs thrown in that I hope you will recognize. Alexander's right time, man.
Alexander's Ragtime Band, and a few other things. <laughs> you know, every, every one of the other songs in that medley was written in the 19th century, yet all of you remember the songs. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I, I just wonder how many people think about that. <laughs> Well, my latest album, which I recorded last year, is something I thought I would never really do, but it is an entire CD of all contemporary ragtime. I like to make the point that ragtime is not dead music by any means. In fact, as far as I know, it's not even sick. <laughs> so, uh, they are still writing rags, and many people, and, and I prefer the ones, the good ones, that sound like the old time stuff. That's, that's my preference. And so, uh, here is a rag. Marty Mincer. He's an apple farmer by day and a ragtime he has by night. Uh, and so he wrote this in 2002 or thereabouts. And he wrote it with Bill Edwards. And it's uh, entitled very appropriately Rag Apples. <laughs> Sacramento, California. He uh, was a computer programmer. 
uh, for a living, but he can sit at a computer and write ragtime in his head all day long. This man is a brilliant musical genius, and he's written over 250 rags. Uh, here's one of them that is just an example of their, their fun and complexity. This one's from the 1990s, I think, and it's called Over the Top by Tom Breyer. Here it goes. Fingers. <laughs> and of course, that was a great compliment. You know, 
not, not politically correct, but it was a compliment from, from Handy. And in the early days, blues were not played real slow and sad like you hear them today. They were played more up-tempo for dancing. In fact, the original cover of St. Louis Blues said the most famous ragtime composition by W.C. Handy. I start out playing it slowly, then get into ragtime, and finally a little bit of boogie-woogie. Oh, and we'll throw in the march, too. And then let's take about a 15-minute intermission, or thereabouts, and I will have some CDs for sale in the hallway if you're interested. Thanks very much.
There's a little bit of uh, musical film music for you. And uh, I'm going to do some more tunes from the 1930s. You can hear how ragtime just influenced all of this other music. And uh, one of those composers was George Gershwin. And I'm going to play a piece for you that uh, I've been playing for a few years now. I just love it so much. I also use this as the title of one of my albums. And it was written by a woman who became known as the Girl Gershwin. Her name was Dana Suisse. And she wrote a number of famous songs, you might know, pop songs like You Ought to Be in Pictures, and The Night is Young and You're So Beautiful. And this one uh, was a, an instrumental first, and lyrics were added later. It's called Jazz Nocturne. And a few years later, it became known as My Silent Love. So here is the original Jazz Nocturne by Dana Suisse.
by inspiration to learn this tune, believe it or not, was also Johnny Maddox. He had a huge hit with this on Dot Records in 1952, a piano solo of In the Mood that sold over a million copies. Hmm. So uh, I played a little bit like he did with some extra boogie woogie. In the Mood. This is Glenn's theme song, Moonlight Serenade.
And now, a uh, little medley of two songs that were in Glenn Miller's second movie. He only made two movies, both for 20th Century Fox, with music by Harry Warren. And these are both from orchestra-wise. And the first one is a gorgeous tune called Serenade in Blue. And then we'll wind up with uh, I've Got a Gal in Kalamazoo, which I learned because I played in Kalamazoo about two months ago. So <laughs> they go together all right. Here's two more Glenn Miller songs for you.
play for you. Uh, I do this as a medley usually. It's two songs. The first of which is not really a Glenn Miller tune. Uh, it was written about two years after Glenn died, but also by Harry Warren, that magical composer. This one won the Academy Award for Best Song in 1946 on the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe. Mm. And as you might imagine, I'm going to play it with Chattanooga Choo Choo. Mm. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Hope you enjoy these tunes and the rest of the festival. Thank you so much. <laughs> 